Okay, today we are going to discuss on the Ankara. Okay, another genus of green algae in the family Caraceae. And these Cara, they are multicellular and they are superficially resemble the land plants. Okay, because of the stem like and also leaf like structures. So, this is a genus of uh, green algae okay in the family Caraceae. now coming to the classification or the systematic position of cara it belongs to the class chlorophyceae order caryals family Caraceae, and genus cara this is the systematic position of cara now coming to the occurrence cara is represented about 180 species okay and most of the these species of cara they are fresh water found submerged in shallow water ponds banks or lakes and a few species of cara they also grow in alkaline water for example cara baltica and also in hot springs for example cara fragilis and these species they growing in heavy water they become encrusted okay or they become covered with a hard surface layer of calcium and magnesium okay with a hard surface of calcium and magnesium and hence they are usually referred to as the stone words so the common name for kara is stone words why because uh, sometimes these species of cara which grow in heavy water they become encrusted or they become covered with a hard surface layer of calcium and magnesium carbonate now these deposits they make their body rough and also brittle in india the genus cara is represented by about 30 species and these are the common ones okay the cara brunei cara gracilis cara gymnoptis and cara zeylanica these are the four species which are very common in india but around 30 species are present okay now coming to the thallus structure of cara so the plant body of cara as you can see here it is multicellular Okay, it is multicellular and also macroscopic it is not microscopic but it is macroscopic and it is about 20 to 30 centimeter in height and as you can see here it is differentiated into rhizoids and the main axis okay these are the rhizoids and this is the main axis now what are these rhizoids they are white thread like multicellular uniseriate and branched structures okay they are branched structures thread like multicellular and uh, uniseriate and they arise from the base of the thallus okay from the base of the main axis as you can see here so they very much resemble the uh, the roots in plants okay so they arise from the base or from the peripheral cells of the lower nodes of this main axis here and they are characterized by the presence of the oblique septa you can see here okay this is the enlarged picture of the rhizoid you can see here the presence of the septation or the septa okay that is what is a septa it is like a wall okay a thin wall which separates the two cells okay that separates two parts so there are presence of these oblique septa in rhizoids and also the ends of the adjacent cells of the rhizoids they are protruded in opposite direction like this okay you can see at the ends they are protruded in opposite direction at the septum so as to form a kind of joint and at this joint 
protrusion from the upper cell it cuts off a segment which divides to form a quadrant okay it divides to form a quadrant and this quadrant is known as a rhizoidal plate. Okay, it is known as a rhizoidal plate. And it gives rise to a tuft of um, branched rhizoids. Okay, so from this rhizoidal plate, many rhizoids will be formed. Branched rhizoids. And the rhizoids, the function of the rhizoids, okay, is to help the plant to attach okay, to the substratum. And not only that, just like the roots, it helps this uh, cara to absorb the minerals. Okay, it helps in absorption of minerals as well as attachment to the substratum. Now, coming to the uh, main axis. Okay, so the main axis is epigale. Okay, that is, it is growing on the ground or close to the ground so that is the meaning of epigale okay the main axis is epigale long and you can see branched many branches you can see this is one branched this is another branch this is another branch and this is another branch from the main axis so that is why it is uh, very much uh, resemble with the plan so it has branches and it is differentiated into the nodes and the internodes okay so these are the nodes here okay you can see this is one node this is another node this is the another node and the spaces between these nodes is referred to as the internode okay so this is the internode and these are the nodes now the internode it is made up of two types of cells okay so this part here this part here in between that is the internode the, the part between the two nodes is referred to as the internode so this internode just remember it is made up of two types of cell okay so let us take a look at this diagram here this diagram now this is the structure of only the internode the internode meaning this one here from here to here okay so from here to here actually this part here the internode it is made up of two types of cells okay it is made up of two types of cells and uh, its central part it consists okay this central part of the internode it consists of a single elongated cell Okay, a single elongated cell called the axial cell or it is also called as the internodal cell. Okay, so it is called the axial cell or the internodal cell. And the axial cell is ensheathed or corticated by a layer of vertically elongated cells so here the actual cell is enclosed and shaped meaning enclosed you can see here this is the internodal cell okay this is the transverse section of the internodal cell and this is of the nodal cell now the actual cell is enclosed or it is ensheathed by a layer of vertically elongated cells of much smaller diameter you can see here okay these are the vertically elongated cells which enclose this actual cell okay so these cells they are called as cortical cells so as you can see here in figure B and C, these cells, they enclose this actual cell in the middle. These are referred to as the cortical cells. And half of the cortical cells, you can see here in this figure, these cortical cells, these cortical cells, they originating at the node. Okay, originating at the node upward 
and half downward. You can see here upward and downward. So these cortical cells, they arise upward and downward and thus the lower half of the internode is covered by the ascending filaments. You can, I hope you can see in this figure, we have the ascending filaments. Now ascending filaments are the, the cortical cells which grow upward and the descending filaments are the cortical cells which grow downward okay downward so that is why in the internode we have the it is covered by the ascending filaments and the descending filaments okay two types of filaments the ascending and the descending filaments but this structure in some species such as cara coralina the cortical cells okay these cortical cells are as you can see here these cortical cells they are absent okay they are they do not enclose the up the actual cell okay they do not enclose the internode so i hope this is clear you can see the internode it is covered by the cortical cells and half above and half below okay the downward cells are called the descending filaments and the upward cells are called the ascending filaments and this is the part where they join together you can see join of filaments so this is the part where these two filaments ascending and descending they join together now we have the node Okay, the node it consists of a central pair of cells surrounded by surrounded by the six to twenty peripheral cells. Okay, so these are the now there are peripheral cells which in the node there are six to twenty peripheral cells. Okay, which surrounds the central cell which surround the central cell here and the there are three types of appendages which arise from the node okay from the nodal cell or from the node so let us take a look at this figure here okay you can see in this figure or this one also it's the same in this figure you can see in the nodes actually in the node here okay they these branches which arise on the node they are the primary lateral or they are referred to as the shoot of limited growth why because they will stop to grow okay after forming uh, about five to fifteen nodes and internodes you can see here also after giving rise to 5 to 15 of these nodes and internodes, so they will stop to grow. I hope you understand these are the nodes, okay? The point where these limited growth, they occur. This is referred to as the node and the space between the nodes are referred to as internode. So after forming about 5 to 10 here, 5 to 10 nodes and internodes, they will stop growing. They will stop growing and there that is why they are called the primary lateral or the branchlets and they are the branches of limited growth now the internodes of these branches okay the internodes of these branches they are shorter than the main axis okay you can see here these branches here this is the main axis and these are the branches. So you can see these branches, they are much more shorter as compared to the main axis. Okay, they are shorter as compared to the main axis and at the nodes of these branches here are present unicellular secondary laterals or the stipulodes. Okay. So, I will show you in this diagram. Now, this is, suppose I take this branches here, this part here, okay, this one. This is the enlarged picture of this part here. 
Now, if you take this, you can see at the node here, what are these structures which arise here are referred to as the secondary laterals or the stipulodes. So, we have the primary laterals here, these, these big ones here, these as you can see here. These are the primary laterals, but here you cannot see the small stipulodes or the secondary laterals are this one here. I hope you can see clearly in this figure, we have the secondary laterals and the primary laterals at the node. And you can see here, these secondary laterals are much larger in size. So you can see the primary laterals, this big one, and these small one, they are the secondary laterals okay the secondary laterals or the stipulodes and this is the main axis this is the main axis so here the reproductive structures as you can see in this figure they also arise in these nodes okay in this area they are born on the nodes we will study later about this male and female reproductive structures, but just remember that the male and the female reproductive structures, they also arise at these branches, okay, at the nodes of these branches. So, if you have understood the uh, primary laterals, okay, these one, which are the shoot of limited growth because they will stop growing, after giving rise to 15 nodes and internodes. And what happened actually here, not only the primary lateral will arise. There are also branches of unlimited growth. For example, this one, you can see this one going from here. Here, this is actually the shoot of the unlimited growth. Why? Because it will continue to grow this, these branches, they arise on the branches. You can see this one here. It arises on the branches of these limited growth. Okay, They arise on the axle of the branches of limited growth. And they are also referred to as the axillary branches or the long laterals. Okay, the long laterals. And they are... As you can see, they are also differentiated into nodes and internodes. Nodes and internodes. Okay, so they are differentiated into nodes and internodes. And they bear, again from here, you can see arise the primary laterals. So these primary laterals, they are not only present in the main axis, but also on these two branches here. You can see, so together, just remember, two types of branches are present the shoot of limited growth you can see they grow only this much but their presence also a shoot of unlimited growth for example this one here and this one here okay and this shoot of unlimited growth they grow indefinitely just like the main axis and also here here also these shoot of limited growth they will arise you can see these Okay, the shoot of limited growths arise and also they, there is node and internode. So these, they grow just like the main axis itself, these branches. Okay, these branches, they grow just like the main axis. And coming to the stipulodes, okay, so let us talk about these stipulodes now. Now the basal node, okay. The basal node of these branches of limited growth, you can see these are the branches of limited growth, alright? So here in the branches of the limited growth at the basal part, at the basal region, they there develop some unicellular outgrowth. So these outgrowth, they are unicellular and they called stipulodes. But some Okay, now these stipulates, uh, stipulates, you can see there are two, uh, two types here. Okay, so there is a difference. Now, in some Cara species, example like Cara brunei or Cara nuda, these stipulates here, they are uh, unistipulate. 
Okay, uni stipulate, it means that the number of stipulates at each node is equal to the number of these primary laterals. Suppose I have one, two, three, four, five. Okay, five number of primary laterals. Then the stipulates also, there will be five. One, two, three, four, and five. So five number of stipulates and five number of primary laterals. These are the primary laterals, okay? These long one here, just like leaf structure, okay? These are the primary laterals. So these number of primary laterals and the stipulates, that is the secondary laterals, they are equal. So it is referred to as unistipulate. Whereas most of the species of Cara, they have this kind of structure, bistipulate. By stipulate, it means that the number of stipulates or the secondary laterals, they are double. Okay, suppose I have six number of primary laterals, then I have 12 number of secondary laterals. So it is double. Okay, it is double the number of primary laterals. And here the number at each node is twice the number of the primary laterals at present at that node but most of the now if the stipulates they are present in a single hole in a single row or a single hole at each node this condition is referred to as haplostephanus okay haplostephanus meaning they are in a single hole Whereas if they are arranged in two holes, okay, in two holes they are arranged, then they are referred to as di diplostephanus, okay. So that means the stipulates, they are arranged in two holes, diplostephanus. So in some species of Cara, they have the this kind of arrangement where that is haplostephanus, where the holes are present sorry, where these uh, stipulates, they are present in a single holes. Whereas if they are present in two holes, then they are referred to as dip diplostephanus. But there are also some species of Cara, such as Cara fasani. The stipulates actually, they are absent. Only the primary laterals are present in some species of Cara, such as Cara Fasani. Now, this figure here, it shows the cell structure that of the nodal cell and the internodal cell. So, as you can see, the nodal cell here, it is short. Okay, These are the nodal cells and these are the inter internodal cells which are very much elongated. So, the nodal cells, they are short and also uninucleate, meaning they have a single nuclei with a dense cytoplasm okay dense and granular cytoplasm and many discoid chloroplasts are present and these chloroplasts chloroplasts they are present without pyrenoids and small vacuoles also may be present in the uh, cytoplasm okay small vacuoles Whereas the internodal cells, as you can see, they are quite long with a large central vacuole. There is a large central vacuole present and many nuclei with discoid chloroplasts in the cytoplasm. So this is uninucleate. The internodal cell is multinucleate. The cytoplasm here. Okay, in internodal cell, it is differentiated into two parts actually, the endoplasm in the middle and the outer ectoplasm. So, the endoplasm, it shows a streaming movement. So, they have, they show a streaming movement. Okay, why? Because uh, the streaming movement or the cytoplasmic movement. That is the movement of the fluid substance within the, within the cell to transport nutritions, then proteins and also uh, other organelles within the cell. Okay, so there is a streaming movement in the internodal cell 
of the Kara plan. Now coming to the, the structure of the coming to the growth, sorry, coming to the growth of the Kara, it takes place by a dome apical shape. Now how this plan it grows, okay? So first it starts by the domed shape cell called the apical cell and this cell it undergoes transverse division okay this the apical cell it undergoes transverse division to form a row of three cells you can see it divides and undergo transverse division and form a row of three cells here the apical cell the nodal initial and the internodal initial so three types of cells due to the transverse division now the upper one here this upper one the cell it remains as apical cell and you can see the second cell here it is biconcave you can see it's like a concave lens okay why biconcave because both side it is concave so it is a biconcave cell and this cell it forms the nodal initial and the lower one it forms the internodal initial now the nodal cell here this one in the middle it will again undergo repeated vertical divisions okay not only once but repeatedly it will undergo uh, cell division and ultimately form two central cell okay it will form two central cell these are the two central cell with the so, and these two central cell they are actually surrounded by 6 to 20 peripheral cells and the branches of limited growth remember these branches of limited growth here okay these branches here of limited growth they they develop from the peripheral cells arranged in a single row okay so branches of limited growth are developed from the peripheral cells which are arranged here Okay, from the peripheral cells arranged in a single row. Now coming to this internodal initial cell here. This one, it does not divide any further. Okay, it does not divide any further. And it elongates much more to form a long internode. Okay, it will just elongate. You can see the difference here and here. So it will just elongate to form a long internode cell whereas these nodal initial if you take a look at the transverse section okay the transsection here it's not uh, visible okay you can see only two nodal initial which has divided vertically but actually these two cells here they are surrounded by the peripheral cells around 6 to 20 in number and we have two nodal cells in between so from here the the primary cells or the branches of limited growth will arise from these peripheral cells okay they will arise from these cells now whereas the internodal initial it will it will just elongate because as you can see this this internode here it does not have any branches right it will just elongate and elongate and elongate so it it just elongates and does not divide any further whereas the nodal cells from the peripheral cells we will get the branches okay the branches of limited and unlimited growth so here after it divides and redivides you can see in this figure 5 the peripheral cells now the peripheral cells they will start to act as the they will behave as modus cell of the primary laterals okay they will behave as modus cells of primary laterals and they behave in the same manner as the apical cell so here these apical cell of branch here 
so when when they behave as apical cell now they will divide in the same manner okay and they will redivide divide and redivide in the same manner so the peripheral cells of the basal node whereas the peripheral cells of the last cell the basal node here that means the node which is present at the base it will not uh, it will start to form the rhizoids okay so this node here this node okay the last node here it will give rise to form the rhizoids okay these rhizoids and the internodal initial as i said it does not divide further it does not divide further it will just elongate so this is the vertical section okay whereas this it shows how the apical cell how the growth it starts from the apical cell okay to give rise to the nodes and the internode so this way you can see it give rise to the branches this is one branches this is another branches you can see the presence of the internodes and the nodes and from the nodes we will get these branches of limited and unlimited growth so here as a result that means there will be many vertical divisions in the nodal initial okay as a result many vertical divisions at right angle to each other in the nodal initial and a pair of central cells okay a pair of central cells and also many peripheral cells will be formed giving rise to these uh, nodes and internodes and also branches okay so this is how the uh, this is the cell structure okay the cell structure of the nodes and the internodes and this is the explanation this is how the growth of cara it occurs so in the next video i am going to explain on reproduction